So if you don't know about Escher, uh, you can visit this website, uh, uh, escherjl.org. Uh, it's, it's basically a framework for declaratively creating interactive UIs. Uh, so you can express UIs as pure functions which take whatever Julia data you have and give out the corresponding UI. And you can use signals from the reactive.jl library um, to create interactive UIs just by creating signals of UIs, so to speak. Um, so the first new thing that is happening in Azure is the component model. So uh, basically, this is go going away from signals into something that is more tractable and like you can. Uh, so component model basically allows you to write parts of the application as uh, self-contained uh, components and then nest them arbitrarily to get like com more complicated components. Uh, so sort of the pattern that comes out of uh, writing UIs in Azure uh, is reified in this model. Uh, so you start off by creating a Mo uh, model type which represents the state of your app or the component and then create a view function for that model which will take the state and then draw something, returns, return an Azure UI basically. And then you write a bunch of update methods with that state and some actions which are coming in from the UI. And also in the view you an annotate what widget gives out what action. So to show you an example, I have this simple app which is, uh, well, I should, uh, okay. One second. Uh, I, I shouldn't have put this debug thing. Uh, anyway, I'll get back to that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I reloaded that. Okay, fine. So uh, the, the, you can see, uh, to do item here, uh, to do uh, list app here. Uh, basically, I can do these things: add more to do items, type in something else, check them all of them, uh, check all of them. Uh, so this is a very simple app. Uh, so I'll show you how the component mo model fits in uh, over here by moving this window to the other side. Okay. So I've just created a type called to do item, which is a component. And it has all the state that is required to draw a single to do item. And the view function takes a to do item and returns a UI. I'll get back to that soon. And the update function uh, takes the, we define a bunch of actions here, which, uh, which contain the required state again. Uh, so the update function takes the to-do item state and then an action and returns a new to-do item state basically. Um, so the way you annotate which uh, uh, widget is going to give out which action is by creating this uh, collector for the actions and then you say uh, the intent of the checkbox is to create a check which, which, is, which is past the changes from the checkbox and it basically ends up becoming a check object which is down here. And similarly, the, when you edit a description, it creates an edit description object and then calls the update method to update the uh, state. And then you actually don't have to write any code to redraw the view. It automatically executes the view, fu view function once the state updates and then redraws whatever needs to be redrawn. Um, so I'll quickly also show that the uh, so this that the uh, the list is also similar. It has a view and a bunch of actions and then some update methods. Uh, so it just has the same follows the same pattern. So I have this uh, so the. Consequence of this is that at any given point, you have uh, one state for the whole app. So what you can do is, I have this uh, debugger, uh, sort of a toy debugger, which kind of records, 
what am I, what I am doing? Uh, okay. Um, uh, and then I can so say I have some bug in my app. I can just go back through all the states and then see what's happening. Uh, uh, so that's the component model, I guess. So the next thing we are working on is a new documentation system, which is over here. Uh, well, I could show this. OK. Um, so this is the, right now the examples are kind of hard to get into. So. Uh, this is uh, a PR in progress where, uh, uh, so it's sort of a documentation with code interspersed. Um, and you can actually go and edit the code and hit control enter to change uh, and like play with it. Uh, And, and then this, this is the content documentation which shows what content you can have in a Azure document. Uh, and this is the typography documentation which Rohit made actually. Uh, Brian Cohen also helped out. Uh, that's the next thing that is coming up. And then the Blink integration. Uh, which I will demo from this window. I'm going to try and mirror the displays. Please work. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you can just include, you, uh, do using Blink and Azure, create a Blink window which is right over here, and say Azure launch, and then pass it a Azure UI. Here, in this case, it's just a markdown string. Uh, it takes a while to pre-compile things. Um, and we should have that over here. I can keep playing with it, do things like add some padding, maybe, and even probably make it bigger, font size 2 m, and uh, this will update. Um, I can also um, Julia Con launch a file. Oh. That's my slideshow. What? Oh. <coughs> what? As you can see. Okay, that's uh, that's the presentation I was showing before, uh, or I can even have interactive UIs inside this. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah. So I guess that's going to be nice for creating. Uh, UIs at the REPL and then also distributing your code. <coughs> and over the past year, uh, there have been some new packages which work really well with Azure. Uh, so I 
took out all the patchwork stuff from the com uh, Compose package and made Compose diff. So now if you want to use Compose or Gadfly with Azure, you need to install Compose diff, which, which, which has the functionality to render Compose objects into Azure very efficiently. And uh, there is Vega.jl by Randy Switch, which is a really, really good uh, plotting package, which works well with Azure. Uh, 3JS by Rohit uh, also works. And NetworkWiz by uh, Abhijit also works with Azure now. Uh, shout out to these people, Rohit, for uh, uh, fixing a lot of bugs and uh, just being on top of things. Uh, and Randy for starting uh, uh, these new issues which uh, got addressed, some of them. Um, Mike Innes for Blink. Uh, Brian Cohen who wrote some of the documentation. And Alan Chis as well who wrote a lot of the do do new documentation. Uh, so yeah, that's my presentation. Thanks. You can <laughs> go over. This, this question is probably explained by my uh, ignorance of the framework, but in your components example, it looked as though the behavioral wiring and the intents and occlusions were fully in line in the declaration with the HBox and even with things like the spacing for the HBox. Yeah. And in a, in a small example that worked, that's actually great to be able to do, but if you were doing a very complex UI, um, would there be a way of, of cleanly factoring out those two concerns at this point, or do you think they would all be in line with each other? Um, you can, I, I, what you can usually do is create different functions for the two, mm -hmm. and then pass the result of one to the other, like say you make the UI in one function, send it to the other one to like add up some behavior to it. Uh, right. uh, so that's how you factor it out. Um, actually, I am also thinking of uh, uh, getting rid of the intents and like, the whole event system altogether and just making all events go to the global scope and come back down. This is what like Elm started doing and it's like considerably simpler to do. So <coughs> since a lot of good ideas in Azure come from Elm, I guess. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? <laughs>